Write Samadhi and insight in Sayadaw U Kandima. Sayadaw U Sandima S teaching. Dealing with pain in Samadhi practice. After sitting in Samadhi twice, everyone's experience is different, but the rising of Dukkha Vedana is the same. However, the sitting posture may be Dukkha Vedana of pains, and aches are the same thing. Here there are two kinds of yogi. Someone has the strong five strengths of sadha, sati, varia, samadhi and panna, and someone has weak strengths. Even though feelings of Dukkha Vedana are the same, someone who has enough strength can send the mind on the meditation object. My instruction is to free you from Dukkha. Dukkha is not the teacher who gives you, but already it's with you, i.e., Vedanakanda. Therefore, however, the practice may be that yogis can't be free themselves from Dukkha. Wherever you keep your mind at the nostril or rising and falling of the abdomen when the kanda is changed, afflicted, Dukkha Vedana arise is the same. Mindful of the mind of the object is connecting or applied thought, Vitaka, this is one of the Janic factors, and keeping the mind on Dukkha Vedana is Karma Vitaka and Bhayapada Vitaka, i.e., sensual thought of not wanting Dukkha Vedana and aversion to it. Keeping the mind on pains, aches and numbness is unwholesome thoughts, Vitaka. This unwholesome Vitaka and Janic Vitaka are competing with each other. This point is very good for contemplation. Even though the mind dislikes unpleasantness, still it can't let go of them. At near death with severe pain and unpleasant mental states of seeing the painful destinations of rebirth signs also can't let go of them. Some gained jhanas but with severe illness they lost him again. So it is very important to practice how to deal with vadanas, sukha, dukkha and apekha vadanas. Vedanas are giving a lot of problems and sufferings to human beings because they get lost in their ignorance and craving. Jhana. Absorption means concentrating one-pointedly on an object. Concentrating one-pointedly on a meditation object and not letting it fall away from it is called jhana. Send the mind to a meditation object is janic vitaka and to vedana is karma vitaka. So there are two vitakas, connecting, arising. Every yogi has to encounter these two vitakas. Could you contemplate insight, vipassana, if these karma, bhayapada and vahimsa vitakas, sensual, aversion, harming thoughts, occupy the mind. These three vitakas are dangerous. In establishing samadhi, you encounter the first danger of disturbance. This is not what the teacher gives you in the dharma process. To deal with it is to practice dharma. If you don't know the path and the meaning of dharma practice, it becomes useless and for parami, perfection only. This is important, as we can see in some Buddhist traditions. Doing the farming is not difficult, but cleaning the field is. To know what one is doing is more important than the practice. This point is related to his own practice. Is there anything more important than to overcome Dukkha Vedana in the practice? This one point is not enough for successful practice. His own biography testified this point without a good teacher, Kalyanamata, no Dharma knowledge, etc. Made him or encountered a lot of difficulties in his practice. Yogis must encounter Janak and Bhayapada Vitakas. These are Janak Vitaka and unwholesome, Akasala, Vitaka. Karma Vitaka comes to pull the Janak Vitaka. Two Vitakas come and pull the mind. It was like chasing a football, and it'll get by one who has more strength. Janic Vitaka sends the mind to the meditation object and Karma Vitaka pulls the mind down to the place of pains, aches, and numbness. You must pull the mind toward Janic Vitaka. Sending the mind toward the entrance of the nostril is Janic Vitaka. Reflecting short and long of the breathing is Janic Vikara, sustaining or sustained thought. It is not possible with the pain down there. Contemplating that there is wrong sustaining. There is no Janic Vitaka if you follow the pains and aches, and become unwholesome Vitaka. 
This is not the cause of a teacher and by one's own cause. You must check your own effort. With no absorption, jhana, there is no path, magga, i.e., jhana pakayo and magga pakayo, jhana condition and path condition. For the path, magga, you use the jhanic condition, jhana pakayo. You let the mind concentrate one pointedly on your meditation objects is jhana. Jhana sends the mind to the place where the air and nostril point contact, the other objects also the same way. Send it with faith, sadha, has faith on the practice and oneself. Contemplating with varia means not letting the mind fall away from the object by giving strength to it, i.e., connecting and sustaining with strength. Here, the faith, Sadha is that there is no other way to get rid of the pain of death other than this practice. Even now with this Vedana yogi becomes uncontrollable to his mind and at dying, it will become worse than this situation. If you follow the desire of Tana, correct the body, when falling into four woeful existences, it will be more painful than here. Therefore, there I will have no refuge and no one to rely on. I must practice with faith, sadha. Sending the mind to the object with power is the strength of effort, varia. Staying alert with mindfulness is the strength of mindfulness, sati. If you practice with these three factors, the strength of concentration, samadhi, develops. Send the mind to the primary object with five strengths, you will get it, if not you don't get it, i.e., samadhi. Do I have strength in the practice? The mind not staying where it has been sent has no strength and becomes painful. You have to know it. You suffer because of association with unwholesome vitaka, unwholesome dharmas or kalesas are fools. So this is association or consort with the fools. You have to know one's mistakes. If you do send your mind to the object of meditation as the teacher says, and it is still really painful, that is the teacher's mistake. If you can't send the mind, that is your mistake. If you free yourself from these two mistakes, it becomes sucker instead of dukkha. In Dharma practice, no matter what, the practice will likely encounter Dukkha Vedana. Vedana only stops at death. While still alive, you have to live together with this lump of poison. Therefore, the most important thing is you have to deal with it. The Buddha warned us to run away from it. The yogis run with strength. Practicing Dharma is done with strength. Could you be free from it if you don't have strength? Ah! It's painful, and it means you don't have strength. Regarding worldly things, the thought of letting me die has never appeared to you because you have to feed it, the body. Here we feed the yogis and the floor is carpeted and comfortable. Do you want to be soft? Could you be soft at near death? If you are in an uncontrollable situation even after sitting for only one hour, then it will be worse than that in a situation close to death. Who will have to suffer? You must understand your own problems and examine your own nature. The Buddha described the process of practice in the Vimika Sutta, the Ant Hill Discourse, Sutta No. 23, Majima Nikaya. The teacher, i.e., the Buddha, asked the student, a monk, to dig up the ant hill, refer to the body. First, he found out a bar in it. Bar refers to ignorance. A house was closed, i.e., doors, by a bar and someone couldn't enter inside the house. In the same way ignorance prevents people from realizing Nibbana. He asked him to put the bar away then continued digging and saw a toad. Toad refers to anger and irritation. 
After putting it aside and continuing digging, he found a forked path. It refers to doubt. This one is in Burmese translation. In English translation, it's a fork, a tool. He again put it aside and continued digging. He found out a sieve, representing the five hindrances. He also has to put it away. I'll leave it at that. If you follow the Sutta, scriptures, it gets long. In the Sutta, continued with the digging, he found out the following things. A tortoise, refers to the five clinging aggregates, five candors. A butcher's knife and block, represents the five cords of sensual pleasure. The piece of meat, a symbol for delight and lust. A naga serpent, a symbol for arahant. Here the teacher was the Buddha or meditation teacher, and the student was a bhikkhu or yogi. The ant hill is yogi's kanda, an ant hill referred to the physical body. A day this body is burning with loba, dosa and moha fires. The bar is a vijja. In the world, there are millions of people, but they don't know the four noble truths. They don't know the Dharma way and can't practice freeing from samsara. Therefore, a vidya is like a bar that closes the door to Nibbana. Now, the yogis here know the way of freedom from samsara is like put away a vidya, ignorance, i.e. listening of Dharma or study of Dharma. Yogi practicing Dharma is moved the bar away. During the practice, Yogi encounters the toad which is like anger and irritation. This is referred to as Dukkha Vedana. Whatever method or system we use and have to encounter it. Thi in Gu Sayadaw and Sayadaw U Kandima, their practices and explanations of the process were quite similar to this Vimika Sutta process. Some teachers of dry insight also gave talks on this sutta explained with their practice. There are some differences. This sutta seems to be the practice process only related to arahantship. Wherever you're practicing, either in the forest or on the sofa, the body is always with you. Do the four elements not change or disturb? In the Asavijapama sutta, it shows the four vipers and here with the toad, dosa. The four great elements are disturbed or changed, and the mind becomes domanasa, aversion, irritation, etc. Without knowing these things, people, only some, are teaching dharma. Some teachers ask students to contemplate anaka, dukkha, anatta, but they didn't know why doing it. The teacher has to explain the beginning, the middle and the end. This point is very important. Sayadaw strongly emphasized this point and wasted a lot of time and effort doing many experiments in order to find the right method in his own practice. Usually, teachers are only giving instructions on systems or methods of the practice. Mogik Sayadawgi was exceptional. Therefore, Sayadawgi's Dharma talks are Dharma treasures for all yogis whatever their traditions are. Do you all know where to start the insight practice, Vipassana? Starting to encounter Dukkha Vedana is the beginning of Dharma practice. With the great four elements being disturbed or afflicted, dosa arises. Practice to free from abhijadomanasa, desire and displeasure, is the first practice. With regard to strip off Vedana, there are three kinds of Sukha, Dukkha and Apekha Vedanas. Sukha Vedana, pleasant feeling, is related to the realms of humans and heavenly beings who are enjoying sensual pleasures, Kamaguna. Dukkha Vedana, painful feeling, is the four woeful realms, Apaya Boom, and no happiness at all they are living with Dukkha. A Pekka Vedana, neutral feeling, is the realm of absorption, Jhana Boom. Therefore, 
These are similar to the three realms of existence. First we have to practice freeing ourselves from Dugati Boom, painful realms, hells, animals, ghosts, titans. Dugati Boom comes from painful feelings. Dukkha Vedana came from the four great elements. It created or gave anger, dosa, and unwholesome, akasala, dharma. At near death beings can shun away from the four senses of the door of eye, ear, nose and tongue, but they can't escape from the body door. With the disturbance or affliction of the four great elements, yogi first has to encounter Dukkha Vedana. I'll show you a very beautiful celestial fairy, and your eyes are looking at her. Then that is poked with a thorn into the other eye. Does the eye, the good one, stay with the celestial nymph or move to the afflicted eye? Therefore, between pleasant and painful feelings where the mind will incline. Between these two Vedana, Dukkha Vedana will dominate the mind. Therefore, the Buddha taught abandoning dosa, the toad first. The Buddha didn't talk without any reason. This is the Kanda process. In Dharma practice, you can't practice by overpassing the process. I.e., without Samadhi power practice insight. Some systems can be exceptions. For example the Mahasi system. The whole process represents Sila, Samadhi and Panna. Mindfulness process is from the coarser objects of the body to gradually leading to refined objects of Dharmas. Some years ago, I met a Mahasi yogi in Burma. With the Mahasi system he has already discerned Anakas, but I didn't know what was the reason he went to a well-known meditation center which taught a different system. The teacher there gave him the meditation of the four great elements. Later what happened to his practice I didn't know. The right advice should be to ask him to go back to practicing the Mahasi system with a good teacher. Closing square bracket. When the poison of the four great snakes arises, there is the feeling of dosa which doesn't want to experience it. How to deal with it is the beginning of the practice. Then how to do with it? To deal with it with the five factors of absorption, the five janunga. We send the mind to the tip of the nostril, and it becomes the five factors of absorption. Does it arrive there every time you send it? Does it now fall down? I.e., toward the pain, don't you pull it up again? It doesn't stabilize and falls down again. It happens going up and down. For going up, you have to put effort. When it falls down there, are you with it? So who is pulling it down there? This problem arises. We must solve this problem. This mind is free if it has not been pulled down there. If you want to free this mind, it needs to dig out the root of the pulling element. It becomes free if you can easily put or keep it on the top of the head and abdomen, i.e., Yuba, Kin and Mahasi system. Now can you keep it there? I have already mentioned some Burmese systems before. The ways of practice are different. For most people to develop samadhi it takes time. If your practice under Yu Kandima in his center, it is a different thing. The pulling element arises, the enemy is there. In sitting meditation, you find out the enemy. If it is your own mind, you can keep it anywhere you like, so mind is anatta and not atta. Now, can you do it? This kanda is not only with one's own desire, and there is still another one with it. There is another thing sends it toward badness. You have to level out long and short, slow and fast breathing when you send the mind to the tip of the nose. You take the strength at the chest area. Keeping the body in a suitable way, i.e. without any tension, relaxed and natural, you can sit longer. 
Some yogis are stretching their upper backs of the body. This is a danger. You have to change it. I'll not allow lifting the waist and stretch the back. Later in the practice, you can't do anything with it. If you make the strength like a runner, you can't continue it. The mind is in the state of the karma mind process. Instead of becoming the path mind process, if it becomes a karma mind process, you can't realize path and fruit, maga and phala. It's anti-path and fruit. Clinging the object with karma is only the karma mind process, karma chitta vithi. His interpretation of dharma and usages are different from others. The karma mind process is covered with loba, dosa and moha. Therefore, don't control the karma body, rupa, with the mind by erecting it. If you do it in a normal way, the body will calm down. So you don't need to be concerned and look after it. The reason you can't send the mind to the tip of the nostril is, when pain increases, with fear and control of the kanda, body. Then it becomes a lump of dukkha, so you get only dukkha, i.e., resist the pain with force. You can't get sucker by doing it. Now, you are going and looking at the pain, aches and numbness below. Yogi has to neglect about it or not concerning it. Later we'll have a reflection on pain by other teachers. Do you not suffer by looking at it? This is Samyojana, fetters, Dukkha feta, feta of view. This is the clinging feta of, my body, my body. Does it give you Dukkha or Sukkha? Dukkha, venerable sir, a yogi's response. Instead of abandoning the Dithi feta, you're sticking with it. You're with this Dithi for a long time of beginningless samsara. You have tried hard to abandon it. Furthermore, you contemplate the touching point as like seeing with the mind when the air is touching with the tip of the nostril. In contemplating the rising and falling of the abdomen, the yogi knows the arising and falling. He contemplates the nature of the arising of form with noting as like seeing with nana. If the falling of form arises, contemplate the nature of falling with noting as seeing with the mind. In this way, contemplating with strength and systematically is possible to achieve it. Here we have to know the practical nature of the Mahasi system. Rising and falling of the abdomen is a primary object, but not as a basic object to develop jhana samadhi. The yogi has to contemplate whatever arising at the present without missing any object, even painful sensations until it subsides. And then continue with the contemplation, whatever is distinct for him at the present moment. Every time the sensation at the top of head arises if the yogi can contemplate it with the five strengths, and it's also possible. Here also we have to know the nature of practice in Yu Ba Kin or Gurn Kaji or Anagam Saya Thet system. The sensations on head is not their basic object for developing samadhi, i.e., upakara samadhi as mentioned by the commentary. Only the yogi attains samadhi, do the scanning of sensations in the whole body starting from the head. One time I had a strange experience with a sensation on the head. One day I was lying down on the bed and watching the breaths. After some time, there was a strong sensation that arose at the center of the head. It was like an iron drill drilling into the head. It was not painful, but I was surprised, and my hand went there and touching the place this was clinging to the head with Dithi, my head. Mogik Sayadorji in one of his talks mentioned the following. In the daytime, there are many people and sounds and voices around you. You're also busy. At that time, you can't hear ordinary sounds. But after midnight, a small lizard falls from the ceiling to the floor. 
It makes a loud, thud, sound, and you hear it very clearly. There is such power in the mind becoming quiet. We be you Sayadorji's meditation instruction is very simple and direct. He only taught one Dharma, not complicated as most teachings, which are developing jhanas and using Abhidhamma teachings for insight. He asked or taught people to observe the sensations arising when the air of in-breath and out-breath touch the tip of the nostril, in all postures. According to Sayadorji, if your samadhi develops, you'll see or discern anaka there. Later the whole body will show its true nature also. Yu Ba Kin's teaching was confirmed by Wee Bu Sayadorji and Anagam Saya Thet's teaching was confirmed by Ledi Sayador. So what are the differences among these systems or methods? From the arising of the abdomen to the falling of it, the yogi has to wait for it. And then the mind runs toward Dukkha Vedana. You must wait from the time of descent to the time of rising again, the mind does not stay in it, and moves toward Dukkha Vedana, because pain is coarser and distinct than the sensation of rising and falling of the abdomen. It's easier falling on to Dukkha Vedana that rising and falling object needs more effort. It does not mean it's impossible, but it requires more effort to do it. When contemplating the preceding mind with the following mind, i.e., Magangas, the mind moves to Vedana, if Vedana arises. Knowing of pain, aches, numbness of the mind arises. Contemplate Anaka, rise and fall, of the knowing mind. Contemplate the impermanence of whatever arising mind. You must be able to contemplate it. It's possible if you have the strength. In Anapana Kamathana, working ground, subjects of meditation, the touching points are close to each other's. Also, the knowing minds, contemplative minds, are near each other so that there is no free time to delay. So it's easy to overcome pain. Therefore, I choose this Kamathana. The main point here is this system is the Ingu method, the way of strong breathing. Other Kamathanas are also not wrong. It's unnecessary for argument on your Kamathana or my Kamathana is right. When Vedana arising unwholesome dharmas of Tana, Mana, Dithi sink the mind in the mud. We use the five strengths to pull it out. We contemplate the meditation object not only with faith, sadha, mindfulness, sati, effort, Varya, Samadhi and discernment, Pana, of the five strengths, but also with the five Janic factors, Vitaka, Vikara, Piti, Sukha and Ekagata, connecting, sustaining, rapture, pleasure and one-pointedness. If you relax the mind, and it'll move to Vedana. Could you relax it near death? Develop the mind to be free from Vedana, pain, by adjusting short and long breaths at the tip of the nostril. When practicing you have to exhort yourself with the frightened mind and doing the practice blindly leads to failure. Even though now you aren't free from Vedana, later you'll be free from it for sure. Use in, i.e., himself, gives you the guarantee. I'll send you or show you to the place where it is free by giving of my time. This is not an exaggeration. Later one of his talks on interview with yogis, including a nun, a woman and a man, discussed their experiences with him. They overcame the pains and gained samadhi. I gave the title for it as, With Samadhi Overcome the Hindrances. Here the yogis could sit for two hours and three hours at a time. They gained samadhi. Some had skeletons as nimitta, mental sign, some thirty-two parts of the body and some had discerned the four great elements, these were the majority. 
For yogis had bones nimitta with samadhi power by contemplating its nature and overcame wrong view, craving with hatred. Now it has become vipassana. It was very similar to the Thai forest tradition which developed jhanas and after coming out from samadhi contemplated dharmas, such as, four elements, 32 parts of the body, a subha, skeleton, etc. Yukandima's systems are more akin to Thai than Burmese. He rejected some Burmese systems or practices as not really vipassana. Some Thai forest monks also view some Burmese vipassana practices in the same way. It seems that there are two ways of development in vipassana practice. Some Buddhists even go to extremes to say that commentaries, Abhidhamma and Vipassana without Jhana Samadhi are not authentic. Indeed, there is no enlightenment without meditation, Jhana. In every realization, the four stages, there are Vipassana Jhanas. There were many evidences in the suttas many people without any jhana practices by listening the Buddha's teachings realized dharma, e.g., santati minister, suramatta, the drunkard, suppabuddha, the leper, some citizens, even sensual devatas, not include Brahma gods. Some well-known Burmese Sayadors like Ledi Sayadaw, Mogik Sayadaw, Mahasi Sayadaw, etc were not ordinary monks and very good Pali scholars and practicing monks. It doesn't really matter whether the teachings and practices of others are right or wrong, what matters is your own knowledge and your own practice. Closing square bracket. I want you all to have the strength to pull the mind out from the Kalesa mind. I am training you to have the strength to bear Dukkha Vedana and to pull yourself out from it. It's like kneading a dough. In making bread by mixing the flour with water, knead it until it becomes dough. While kneading, you can't do it in a comfortable manner. To make a thick and sticky dough, you have to use force. It is better to become a thick and sticky dough. For three or four days is like kneading the flour with water and can't take comfort in doing it. It's not yet arriving at the stage of making the cake of vipassana. All of your minds are very coarse with loba, dosa and moha. Ultimate reality, paramatta mind and body, form, rupa, are so refined that you can't work with this coarse or rough mind. We're making our minds, contemplative minds, to become refined. Now we're doing the sitting an hour each for five times. Later we'll practice for two hours for each sitting. Yogis who want to practice with my meditation, Anapanasati, adjust the short and long breathings, and keep your mind toward you. After nine days, you can stay as you wish. Anyone who gives up the effort only ends up with loss and will not easy to die at dying. If you now push away the teacher's welcoming hand to save you and a dying will have an ugly face to die. Now, this kind of Vedana will not kill you. It's just a little bit. You have to practice keeping the mind free, and to keep the momentary happiness aside. We do the in and out breathing like seeing with the mind at the touching point. If we breathe the same as the machine, then don't incline the mind toward the machine. Only to be aware of the sound coming toward you and adjust your breath as the same to the sound. If you are able to do it, then don't pay attention to the sound. You only adjust your short and long breathings to become equal. The mind gradually arrives at the Janic process, and you don't want to come out from it. From onward, I'll only explain its nature. Hello. How are you? Edit this text, or upload a file. Click, play, and I will read it out loud for you.